Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We had a rainy night last night and it was rainy all morning, but now it's cleared up and the sun is coming out. Today I'm going to be working on my African Pyrenees style Sarissa Japonica. I'm going to be putting this tree in the Toronto Bonsai Society's spring show and sale. So I've got five days to get this tree ready for the show and there's several things that need attention on it. I've got to prune up the canopy, separating the foliage pads, trimming it to shape. I've got to do the landscaping down below and I've got to clean up the trunk. There's a lot of algae at the base of the roots. Here's a close up of the root base and you can see all the dark kind of green algae down at the base of the soil line and the roots. I got to get that cleaned up so it's the same color as the trunk. I'm going to start today by pruning up the canopy of the tree, getting the foliage pad separated, getting it pruned back to shape. And in the next five days before the show, if it starts growing in again, I can just pinch those tips to maintain the form of the tree. I usually begin the pruning on my Sarissa by coming in with my large blue shears and kind of pruning a profile to the top of the canopy. It'll be important that I get the edges here thin on both sides and then thicker in the middle. And I want the curvature of the top to kind of be echoed down below. So to keep my, my foliage very thin across the top. So it'll be curved underneath here, the underside of the foliage and the top. So, and I want separate pads. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, getting this just right. So do I use the blue scissors or do I not? That is the question. I've also noticed that my the underside of my canopy is a little lower on this side, so I might have to prune away some of the lower branches here just to bring that up so it's, uh, the bottom of the canopy is a little more horizontal. It's not too far off, but just maybe a little pruning on this side underneath. Definitely, I need to prune up more in the middle here to get more curvature underneath. And this is a good time to do it. The plant is super, super vigorous right now. It's in ideal growing conditions out here in the greenhouse. It gets misted, it's a nice temperature, it gets sun all day long, not too bright a sun, not too dark. It's just, I think it's just right for the Sarissa. The glass of the greenhouse helps block, you know, the intensity, the light a bit. So even though it's in full sun all day here, it, it's still not, as intense as it would be out on the bench, which is good. I mean, the Sarissas, they don't recommend, you know, full high intensity sun all day. They prefer a little less light. It might seem a little strange, but I'm going to begin by pruning the underside of the canopy first. I want to see how much I can raise the foliage in the middle to get kind of that curvature underneath. And that maybe, you know, it might help me determine where I place my foliage pads how high they are because if I have to prune away some of the underneath here maybe I don't want to prune off as much on top to keep the foliage pad a little higher so I'm going to begin underneath the tree so in order to raise the canopy in the middle here I may have to prune off some of these lower branches which is fairly major uh, it'll affect the width of my canopy a bit but I, I think it's just something that you know will have to happen to evolve this design into the future where I have that rounded canopy underneath. So I'm just seeing how far I could cut it back and what it looks like from above. You know, you don't want to lose that oval shape from above. You don't want to hack the front all back, making it flat on the front. Very difficult. And you know, you can't do everything at once. It, it's it's something that's just got to kind of evolve over time to get that rounded shape underneath. So this is the one branch that's quite low here on the right hand side that kind of makes the underside of the canopy, you know, it's lower on this side and higher on this side. So again, I don't know, like um, I can move some of the foliage that's lower down here, but I've got to keep the growing tips to grow up into this area. I can't just, you know, prune all these branches off or I lose, I lose my canopy there. I think I've just got to be patient, grow them out taller, and then start removing the foliage underneath here. 
but I can remove some of it for now. So there's some in here, and that's where I'll start removing some of this foliage that's a little lower down on the tree. I've also got to clean up all my stubs from pruning, try and get the branches nice and flowing. So each branch I work on, I'll try and clean it up a bit. So that got rid of some of the foliage back here. I still have some low branches here, which I think can go because I have a more upright one going over here. So those will come off. Like that. So that raises the canopy a bit. I'm happy with that. Move some of these leaves that are underneath here. Maybe this branch doesn't need to be there. No, that branch does not need to be there. I don't think it needs to be there at all. Coming right off. Now, what else can I remove in the middle here? So I've got to keep these branches growing, but I can remove some of the leaves that are back here. Just keeping my foliage at the tip there. That'll bring the canopy up a bit. It'll be subtle, but you know, every time I do this, it will help it. It'll uh, slowly raise the canopy up in the middle here. That's helping a bit. Now, I've got a branch that's hanging down quite low on this side. I've just got to see how even it is. Let me see if that use the ruler. I'm at seven inches and here yeah, it's about right. It's about seven inches to the bottom of the foliage here and about seven inches here too. So we'll leave that branch. Just prune off some of the lower leaves. And I've also got to prune out any leaves that don't look very good. Like ones that have yellowing on the tips or older leaves. Everything's got to look really nice. I'll show you some of the yellowed leaves from above too. So in here in the canopy, you can see, you know, back in here, the older growth is, it's not yellow, but it, it's not dark green. So you want to pick those out. There's one with kind of yellow on it. So any leaf that doesn't look perfect, just remove it, pinch it off, or pluck it out. Because it really affects the overall look of the tree. Uh, you don't get that yellowish tinge to it. It just looks all green and healthy. Okay, I think it's pretty good. I'll show you. I'll show you it from above and you can see how it's a fairly nice even green color now. So here it is. You can see how, you know, nothing stands out as being, you know, yellow leaves or anything. It's looking pretty good. Now, the big question is, do I use the blue shears to shear it to shape? It's a good way to prune off all this long growth here. I could do it by hand, but I think, you know, the shears does a better job. It kind of gets it more even. When you do it by hand, you know, you're kind of... I think it accomplishes the same thing and the shears are quicker. Not that I'm in a hurry. I just think, you know, I can get the shape more accurately with these long blades. You can come in and just prune like that. You know, watching from the front to make sure I've got my angles right. So do I use the blue shears? Yeah, I'm using them. So you can see it already looks better on this side. So I've got to come in.
So I've got to get those edges feathered. You can see from the side view, it's too high here. Now I do want to raise the canopy so I can't go too low here, but just trimming off the longer shoots like that from the top too. And then coming down the back. I'm going to step back and have a look at it now. Make sure everything's going according to plan. It's looking good. It's a little heavy in this side here, so I've got to prune that back a bit. Let me have a look again. This is quite nice. A little, little too full here. I think that's looking quite nice. I'm still a little thick at the edges. So I may try and prune those down, taper them down a bit. And over here. I think that's looking much better. I'm going to check my side view here. I need a bit more off the back here. Check this view. Yeah, same here. It's too full on this side. There's some more has to come off here. So it's always a good idea to rotate your tree around as you're pruning. You know, check it from all angles. It is a three-dimensional object. The front is the most important view, but you know, it's got to look good. People do walk and look around the trees. Can't be a tree that looks good in only one view. Okay, I, I think I'm going to step back again. I think it's looking quite nice. So I, I'm really, I'm liking the shape of it. I think it looks really good. The only criticism is it's, this branch here is maybe a little low. It doesn't have that good arc underneath. So maybe I can take a little foliage off of this branch and adjust it in the front view. So maybe even just removing some of this foliage on the underside here will help. It's a small thing, but you know, for a show like the Toronto show, you want to get all your little details right. That's what makes a tree look really good. That's helping. It's definitely helping. Moving some of these lower leaves here. Just kind of raising the canopy where I can. And it'll be a long-term process doing this, but it'll get there. To really achieve that Pyrenees style, you have to do this. You have to get that curved underside. I mean, you don't have to, but that's typical of the Pyrenees style is to get it curved underneath and on top. If you look at 
Mr. Pierneef's paintings. You'll see that in his paintings. Now, acacia trees in the wild don't always have the curved underside to them, but many of them do. There's all kinds of different species and variations. There's a shoot sticking straight up here. I'm going to remove that. Now, at the back here, I, I did some major work at the back, you know, pruning a big branch off, and I'm trying to fill it in. It's under construction, the back of the tree here. So I've got to try and clean it up the best I can. Like there's a branch here that's reaching out that will fill in this part of the canopy eventually, but so for now, I kind of have to leave that on there. I just prune it up so it's a little less noticeable. That's a little, little better. There's some more leaves on the underside here I can prune up. It's important to be able to see through the canopy. So if you look from the front, you want to be able to see all through just branches right to the back of the tree. You don't want your foliage at the back coming down and kind of blocking that view through the tree. So I've got to you know, work on the back of the canopy just as much as the front, clearing out all the leaves hanging down and that kind of a thing. That's looking better underneath and you can see you know it's a little high here but it has that nice curvature and this may become the front of the tree someday it's quite nice from this view it's actually really really nice um, I'm pretty sure that'll become the front of the tree I think it's looking better than this side they're both nice but I think, you know, someday this will be the front of the tree. Kind of the primary branch coming out here. Thick one off to the right hand side. Yeah, and the roots are quite nice from this view. So I think, you know, there's a shoot sticking straight up here that needs pruning, but I think for now that's about as good as I can get the underside of the canopy. I think it's cleaned up as much as I can clean it up. All right. So I've kind of got the overall profile in place, the underside profile in place. So next is to separate my foliage pads to get space between all the different pads. That'll be kind of exciting. So here I am top side on the tree, just pruning out a yellow leaf. So what I've got to do, I've got to trace my branches up. So here's one branch, primary branch coming up. And you can see there's no space around it. So I've got to create that space. I've also got to prune the pad, pad flatter. So there, you know, several, it's the canopy is composed of several flat pads and again, angling them as they go to the outside. So this one's kind of up the middle. So it'll be pruned quite flat. And I could use the blue scissors for this, you know, just come in take each pad and just flatten it out like that and here but I don't think I need to the, the blue scissors are a little little clumsy for doing this detailed work so I'm just going to you know use my regular scissors and you can just prune the pads so I, I've got to put clearance around it so any shoots that are sticking out too far from the pad I prune back and I'm also cleaning up you know when I prune the profile with the blue scissors I was cutting through leaves anywhere on the branch so I'm just cleaning all that rough work up so I'm pruning back to some good healthy leaves so that's got that little little pad kind of cleaned up now it still doesn't have space around it because the surrounding pads are too long too. So here's one I can prune back, prune back, prune this back further. So 
So that's got that little pad put up quite nicely. Got some space around it. So I'll just do that for all the branches. So here's another branch. So this one, I can maybe start angling it a bit. So putting a little more off on the left hand side here. And by separating this, you know, big dome canopy into several small pads, it makes the tree look more mature. It makes it look more miniature. And hopefully at the end of the day today, you'll see that, that it, it goes from looking okay to kind of super miniature. That's my goal anyway. This operation of thinning the canopy out, creating those separate foliage pads, is quite time consuming. I've spent probably close to an hour on just this, maybe a quarter of the tree. So it'll, it'll take a while and give yourself time to do it slowly and accurately because it's just something you can't rush. So I'm going to work away at the rest of the tree and then we'll come back and see how it's looking. I've got my pads all separated. So now I'm going in and checking flow lines. So if I look down here, I want the branches to kind of have a bit of flow to them. I had a lot that were kind of shooting up vertical. That kind of spoiled the look of the tree, I think. So I, I'm thinning it out and, you know, it, it's opening up a lot of space in the canopy, which is, is good. You know, I want it to look a little sparser. It's to, still way too full at the back here. So I'll continue, you know, checking those flow lines of all the branches, trying to, you know, I want movement and taper in them, but I don't want, sometimes there was like three growing from one spot, so I'm thinning it out. Branches growing back in towards the center of the tree. You know, standard pruning, just to smoothen it out a bit, uh, making it more flowing and hopefully more beautiful. I have finished pruning up the tree. I took a lot off trying to clean out those flow lines. You can see all the foliage and branches on the bench underneath the tree on the floor. So yeah, it, it the branch structure flows quite a bit nicer now. I did a lot of thinning, you know, on some of the branches that are sweeping out to the edges. I took a lot of vertical growth off them. I think it I think it really improves the tree. It, it makes the structure look nicer. And, you know, I've got, well, I guess four days before the show. So I think I'll get a little growth in the tree uh, in the meantime, probably. And I think it'll just fill it in nicely. It'll just soften it up a bit. But yeah, I, I'm happy with it. I think it, it's looking very acacia-like. So my next step, I've got to clean up the terrain here. I've got to take a layer of this bonsai soil off, put some sand down, plant some moss, moss bushes, and maybe even a rock. I've played around with a rock, but last time I played around with a rock, the zebra and the rock were just too much. It uh, took your eye away from the tree. So I think just the zebra will be fine with a few little moss bushes under the tree. Keep the display quite simple. And I think that'll be it. So I'll start cleaning up the ground now. I'll remove the zebra and I'll take the tree outside and I'll just blow on it and that'll blow 90% of the leaves off. So here I go. If I was more organized, I could put like a towel around underneath and just remove the towel, but I never think of it. I think that'll do. The rest I can use tweezers on. This tree was started from a cutting and it was one of the first plants I ever bought. I bought it off of Eldon Lease, who is the one of the founding members of the Kitchener Waterloo Bonsai Society. He had an open house at his place and I bought 
this little Ceresa, I think it was like six dollars or something a little cutting like it was the thickness of one of the thinnest branches here it was like just a a thin little thing and I think it was sitting in a yogurt cup or something like a little tiny yogurt thing and yeah I've just been growing it ever since so it's probably oh it's got to be I've been doing bonsai for 30 years and it's one of the first trees I ever got so I would say it's probably 29 years old from a cutting now and you know it was pretty slow growing at first well it's still you know growing slowly because I prune it a lot but at first you know when you've got just a few leaves on it it doesn't grow that fast it just picks up momentum the more leaves you have and the better the root system it starts growing faster and faster yeah, it's been kind of fun watching it mature you can even see if you go back to the first time it appeared on the channel eight or nine years ago how much it's changed in that time it's pretty dramatic and changed in a good way so I'm hoping you know I'm hoping I can keep it alive into the far future and evolve this even further always trying to refine it and make it more natural looking I've got the surface of the soil all cleaned up so it's looking pretty good so I need to get some red sand I'll have to go to the pet store the they sell all different colored sands for the bottom of aquariums so I'm going to try and get some reddish colored sand and I, I won't use it straight out of the bag I think I'll mix it with some playground sand just to get some variation I'll try it out and if I don't like the reddish colored sand then I'll go with the playground sand mixed with the white sand, my standard kind of desert tan looking sand. So, so that's what I have to do. I have to go get sand from the pet store now. I do like how the roots are spreading out on this tree. It kind of, uh, you see a lot of trees like in a dry environment where the roots spread out looking for moisture. So it's kind of getting that look to it, which is kind of cool. I'm back I tried getting the reptile sand but the reptile sand was too pinky a color it didn't look red enough so I went to Michaels and they have some colored sand they sell there too so I got a, a jar of colored sand I don't know if it's ready and like reddish enough but I'll give it a try um, I can always mix in some of that uh, Turfus that red turfus from the baseball diamonds There's a big pile of used turfus beside the one diamond that it's been there for several years So I think I'll just scoop a bit of that. I don't think they're using it for anything It's beautiful and warm out now. So I'll have to do a little watering tonight It's going down to four degrees Celsius. So four degrees above freezing We haven't had a night this cold in a long time for over a week so I might have to put the heat back on in the greenhouses for the nighttime. Here's a look at the sand that I got from the Arts and Crafts store. I'll give you a close up. It's not quite a reddish color, but it's kind of a nice coffee brown color. So I think I'll get some of that athletic turfus, crush it up, and maybe mix it with this, and I think that'll give me a nice color. There's a close up of that kind of sandy color there. All right, so I'll go off and get some of that turfus now. I am back. I rode my bike over there. So here's here's a look at the soil. Well, the athletic turfus. So it's a nice kind of reddish brown color, very natural looking. I think that's perfect for that. Make it look like that African soil. So this has been sitting on top of a hill. They scraped all the old stuff off the baseball field replace it with all new um, turfus and it's been sitting in a pile way at the end of the ball diamond kind of near a forest for almost two years and there's weeds growing in it and everything so I don't think there's any poisons or weed killer or anything in it but I will wash it just to make sure because um, you never know they do spray around the fence line at the ball diamond so just in case it has any weed killer left in it, I'm going to rinse it all out. And then uh, 
dry it and use it. So I've got a bucket of water here. I'll put it all in the bucket of water. All right, I'll mix it up by hand. Yeah, hopefully it'll look good on the, the surface. Okay, I'll let that sit for a while. And then once it's sat for a little bit, I'll pour off the water on top, fill it up with fresh water again, and then repeat the process. Keep rinsing it until, until all the dust gets uh, washed out of the gravel. All right, I'll pour off that top layer now. All right, here goes pour number two, and I think this will be the last one. I think it'll be plenty clean enough. You can see there's a bit of a slimy layer there, clay, and then the gritty stuff down below. So I think, you know, when that's dried out, it'll be a really good mix for the surface of my soil. And let that dry. I'll have to wait until tomorrow for that soil to dry and then I'll mix up some different recipes to see what gives me the best color and surface texture. And then we'll continue work on the sarissa, the African Pyrenees style sarissa. So that should be a lot of fun tomorrow. Adding some moss bushes, finishing off the landscape. And then we'll try it on the stand and see how it looks. And then I got to pick out an accent plant to go with it. So still lots more work to go creating this show tree for the Toronto Bonsai Society show that's coming this weekend. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>